Hello and uh, welcome to a part two of this idea of the method of areas. Now we have a few more interesting things to tell you about the method of areas and uh, also a couple of very standard and well known problems. So let us mention um, one very very simple basic result which is known as the basic proportionality theorem. I should not prove it, but it is something that we should never forget. So suppose you have a triangle and you have a line which is parallel to the base and if it cuts the uh, triangle in D and E, then the basic proportionality theorem, mind you, or uh, better write it, D E is parallel to the base B C, then we have a B divided by D B is equal to A E divided by E C and uh, the converse is also true. So if these ratios are equal, then the two lines are parallel. Now both of these are such basic results, but you must understand that the basic proof of this theorem comes with the method of areas, please do check it in your textbook. And in fact, this theorem is really fantastic because it gives you the proofs of the, the three ways of proving similarity and we have already proved to you that similarity is such a wonderful and great tool. So as in all, I just mentioned here that this nice result and the converse are due to the method of areas. Now we proceed to state what is also known as a very similar result, follows directly from here, it's called the intercept theorem, just mention it. The intercept theorem is also very easy to remember and uh, very basic, so if you have three lines which are parallel, L1 is parallel to L2 is parallel to L3 and if you draw any line transversal in any direction and then AD divided by DE is equal to A1 D1 divided by D1 E1 is equal to A2 D2 divided by D2 E2. So very easy to remember and the proof is almost a one-liner. It's the same theorem as the basic proportionality theorem. Just replicate this line a line parallel to this line passing through this. Now because this is a parallelogram, AB is equal to A, okay, A X and DE is equal to XY and now the basic proportionality theorem says that AX over XY is equal to AD over D1 E1 which is the same thing as AD by DE and we are done. There is no difference between the intercept theorem and the basic proportionality theorem. So we will leave it at that and now let's do one more result which we did last time with a slightly different proof. This is such a standard move that we should not uh, bypass it. So what is the uh, theorem about the angle bisector? Now I think I should be a little bit careful about the diagram. Okay, I should draw it here. So I just take the result the same, this is the same um, result that we did last time. I just want to give you a different proof because it's such a standard and nice move. What are we trying to prove? We're trying to prove that if you have an angle bisector and then C divided by B is equal to BD by DC. The ratio BD by DC, suppose it is n is to n, will be equal to C upon B. So C upon B is equal to M upon N. Now last time we gave a proof based on the method of areas, but this is not the method of areas, but it is a very basic move. It is a nice move. You draw a construction line parallel to the bisector passing through C. Now these two lines are parallel. Now you extend this line, there's another construction line. Extend this line 
to meet this line. So let's call this point as um, E. Now, what you can quickly see is that this angle is equal to this angle because this construction line is parallel to this line. And this angle is also equal to this angle because its angle bisector is equal to this angle. And that is why it's such a neat construction line. And then we realize that these two angles are equal and therefore this side is also equal to B. And I think we're nearly done. Please note that this line being parallel to this line by construction, we have the basic proportionality theorem which says that BD by DC, BD by DC is equal to BA by AE. BA by AE, and this is basically the theorem which says that C by B is equal to M by N, and we are done. So, I just wanted to show you this construction, which is a very simple and standard construction. So now, whatever time is remaining in today's lesson, I shall solve three or four very neat and simple problems based on the method of areas. So let's do them. This will hardly take any time. Very nice and very neat and very straightforward. The first problem goes like this. If you have a parallelogram whose area is given, so let's say that the area of the parallelogram is equal to S. Now, it's very, very easy to realize that you take any random arbitrary point on the opposite side, let's call this as E, then the area of this triangle, area of this triangle is going to be S by 2. Now, there are many ways of seeing this. Uh, let me just uh, point out uh, two ways. Um, one is to realize that this triangle has the base the area of the parallelogram is actually equal to the base into the height. So this is equal to the base into the height. And the area of the triangle, D, E, C is just half base into height. And we are done. So that's one way of seeing that the area of D, E, C is half the area of the parallelogram, which is equal to S by 2. Now, I'll show you this in another construction. If you draw the construction line through E, but parallel to A, D, or parallel to B, C, the same thing. Now, you can see that this area is half the area of this parallelogram and let's call this as x then the above area the other triangle is also x and if you call this as y then this other triangle suppose the area of this triangle is y then the area of the other triangle is also y and you can quickly see that the total area of the parallelogram is equal to 2x plus 2y, while the area of the triangle DEC is equal to x plus y, which is basically half the area of the parallelogram. So now let's give small extensions of this simple idea. What one also realizes is that in this parallelogram A, B, C, D perhaps this point need not be on the line AB so instead of that even if it is outside and you draw this triangle 
D, E, C. And so, suppose the area of the parallelogram is S, then the area of D, E, C will again be S by 2. Now, this is very obvious because this triangle D, E dash C and this triangle have the same area because they have the same base and they have the same height. So this height or this height or this height is all the same because of the fact that the lines are parallel and the base is the same. So these two triangles have the same base and basically this is the method of areas. So with that we have just shown that the point E need not be on AB inside within AB but it can also be outside AB. Now another small extension of the same idea. Suppose that you have a parallelogram A, B, C, D. Now I choose some random point inside the parallelogram. So let's call that as P and what we will easily see soon is that this area, this shaded area plus this area is going to be half the area of the parallelogram. So if the parallelogram B, B, C, D is equal to S, then the shaded area, that is the area of triangle A, B, B plus the area of B, P, C. D, P, C will be half the area of the parallelogram. So this is also very easy to see. It's possibly a one-liner just because of a neat construction line. Uh, so we just draw this construction line through P and parallel to AB or parallel to BC, same thing. Now one quickly realizes that this area, this area is x which is half the area of this parallelogram. So the area of this parallelogram is going to be 2x from the previous theorem. Now if this area is y then the area of this parallelogram is going to be 2y by the previous theorem and therefore the area of the parallelogram is going to be 2x plus 2y while the area of this non shaded portion is going to be x plus y which means that the remaining shaded area is x plus y so I am just going to write it down which means that this area is equal to x plus y and that is equal to the area of the parallelogram divided by 2. So uh, this is another neat theorem. I want to just repeat it quickly. You can work out the proof on your own if I went too fast. But essentially what we said is we take a parallelogram and take some point inside it and then find out this area and it is going to be no matter where the point P is inside the parallelogram, the shaded area is going to be half the area of the parallelogram. I think we shall not state this again. Now, I shall end this lesson with two very, very, very famous problems. If you haven't seen them, you'll really like it. It's simple but fun. So here's the problem. And um, like one of the previous classes, I think you should pause the video and do the problem. It will not take you much time. But I should just proceed to solve the problem. So here's the problem. Draw some random triangle. Let's call it A, B, C. Now symmetrically extend this line so that these two lines are equal. Do the same thing here 
symmetrically extend this so that this is equal to this and do the same thing here symmetrically increase it so that this line uh, this segment is equal to this segment now uh, join these uh, let me just call this as a dash c dash or b dash and c dash and join them and the popular question says that given that the area of a b c is s so given that the area of a b c is equal to s what is the area of the big triangle a dash b dash c dash all right i should proceed to do the problem but you should try this problem for a few minutes you will definitely get the answer and if I remember correctly, I think the answer is seven S. So let's see how to do this. It's a simple construction line. Now, what you realize is, let's see uh, how to do this. Uh, we just need to draw. Okay, let me start with this construction line. So if I draw a construction line like this. Now you realize in these two triangles, they have the same area because this is equal to this, so this area is going to be S. Now for pretty much the same reason, this triangle and this triangle will have the same area, so this area is also going to be S. Now let's um, also draw this construction line which means that if this area is S then this area is also S and for the same reason because the fact that these two segments are equal this triangle and this triangle will have the same area so this is going to be S and now for the last construction line I think I should join maybe this one Okay, so now you can see that you know, this segment is equal to this segment. This area is also going to be S. And because of this segment equal to this segment, the area of this triangle is also going to be S. And I can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 S. Okay, so very neat simple problem based on the method of areas and a little bit of construction now there is a small extension to this problem and uh, it's very interesting so i should just take the problem and uh, i shall solve it quickly but i'm sure that if you pause the video you'll be able to solve it so let me put up the similar problem which is very similar to this i'm just going to draw it now so the problem goes like this do the same thing like the previous problem for an arbitrary quadrilateral. Okay, so here's an arbitrary quadrilateral. We have A, B, C, D. And follow a similar construction. Extend this line. Okay, extend this line so that this is equal to this. Do the same thing here. So that this is equal to this. Do the same thing here so that this is equal to this. And uh, do the same thing here so that this is equal to this. Alright, so now join this. So let's label it as A dash, B dash, C dash, and D dash. And like before, given that this area of the quadrilateral is S, find out the, okay, let me just write it down. Given the area of A, B, C, D is S, 
what is the area of a dash b dash c dash e dash okay so exactly similar question now i think in this case the area is 5s and uh, i think you should be able to do this but maybe i shall quickly go to the solution once so here the trick is to call this area as x and this area as y in other words we are saying that s is split up into x plus y and now let's see what happens if i draw a construction line like this if you draw a construction line like this then let me see we have uh, this is uh, these two areas are same and actually uh, I'm struggling with this one just give me a second should I draw this as a construction line So, okay, let me draw this construction line maybe. Okay, so this is x, then this is also x. And if this is x, then this is also x because these two segments are same. So this looks okay. And now let me do the same thing on this side. So if you draw this as the construction line, now this is y and this is y for the same reason that this is equal to this and now since this is equal to this, this is y. Okay, so what have we proved? We have proved that the area of this triangle plus the area of this triangle is equal to so let me just write it down. What we just proved is that the area of the two shaded triangles, that is a dash, b dash, b plus b, b dash, c dash, the area of the shaded triangles, the yellow shaded triangles, is actually equal to 2x plus 2y that is equal to 2s and we are going to finish this problem in one more line by symmetry the area of the area of this triangle I am just going to use a symmetric argument the area of this triangle plus this triangle is also equal to so the white triangles the white triangles also equal to 2s by a symmetric argument and therefore the total area is 5s total area is equal to 2s plus 2s plus the original quadrilateral area which is s and that is 5s okay I struggled a bit but I'm sure you realize it's very easy and with that we shall end this discussion on the method of areas and move on to another idea in the next class in geometry. I hope you'll join me there. See you. Bye.